Welcome back to the second half of our Composers Forum 5 specialty forums, and now we'll hear from Music in the Natural World.
Wonderful piece. I loved hearing all that variation and all the repetition that was embedded in this soundscape in this uh, wonderful time all we had together. So I'd like to ask each one of you guys, uh, just down the row, um, a little bit, of, I want to hear a little bit about what your role was in this piece. And also, so what your role was with together as an ensemble and also what instrument, I mean, sorry, what animals inspired your um, performance. So starting with Albert here. The animal I chose to represent was the insect. Uh, uh, wonderful. I'm just going to read off my score. There are several symbols in the legend that correspond to different sounds, including a new insect spawning, which played the very pitched insect theme, and then the idle sounds, which were a sweep down. And that sort of changed over the day because there were different events where the insect gained or lost several legs, which determined how many idle sounds it would play at once. Very cool. I was a total of two animals there. Uh, for the beginning and most of the piece, I was, a, I guess, a frog or a bullfrog. Um, then at the end, when it turned to more nighttime, I was an owl. It's kind of more limiting being on a horn, I guess, than other instruments where pitch can be more... I guess microtonally control if I want to get specific. I'm more limited by partials, so that was interesting to work with. Uh, yeah. Um, I was uh, representing a mixture of like an insect and a frog. Um, I did this by using uh, mostly the percussion elements of a guitar, such as scratching the string or tapping the side. I was various birds, such as the morning dove, which you actually hear a lot of on campus, and a fly, because there are lots of bugs here. My role was also the morning dove, and then I also played the role of thunder in the very beginning of our piece. So there was some structure there with the thunder? Um, so I was in charge of keying the audience to do, um, to move the, your, their hands together, which is creating the sound of rain. And my the animal I was imitating was the woodpecker, and I did this by hitting my knuckles against the lid of the piano. Uh, I was a bird. I don't think this bird actually exists, but it was just a random bird that may or may not exist somewhere. And um, I was a day animal, and when it turned to night, I became the wind. Well, I think I'm sure all the birds are happy you joined their family. Uh, I also am just curious a, a little bit about um, what animals you decided not to represent here, and just talk a little bit about maybe some animals that were difficult to represent, so you decided to leave it in the drawing board. Uh, there weren't really any of those. Oh, we didn't, like, it was like we just decided to pick animals that like we knew that our instruments could play or like weather phenomenons. So it's like. Awesome. I considered uh, becoming a, uh, playing the sound of a cricket using harmonics on the violin, but I, it was a bit hard. And in, while I was thinking of how to mimic crickets, I came across the woodpecker, which I felt like I could uh, mimic more easily, and yeah. Cool. Um, I think with this piece, we used a lot of animal noises that we would usually hear around campus, ones that we were more familiar with, so I think that's why we chose that certain So matching your piece. environment. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, adding off of that, um, there were also limitations to what our instrument could do. So for example, the guitars wouldn't be able to replicate the frog sound that Charlie could do. Yeah, adding, adding on to the guitar part, uh, guitars are pretty limiting instruments. Most of the repertoire for guitar is, ba is based off like dancing among plants and flowers rather than actual live instruments. So I had to come up with ways to use like, the guitar is more of a percussion instrument, which 
because percussion has more has a better relation to animals. Yeah, I think it was all about just finding what worked. Some of it was I guess inspired by what we did in class, which was a lot of listening, then trying to recreate. And that also played in the structure, just all that jazz. Um, French horn can do a lot, but it also can't do much, so. Um, yeah, I guess it can do a lot of what it, it does, which is, I don't know. Um, so kind of had to really experiment um, with how you create sound with these instruments to, I guess, create something you find in the natural world. We listened to a lot of works that used bird songs and such to find inspiration. Awesome. Lastly, Albert. I think we could have recreated any animal sound because we had a wide range of different instruments along with the audience. But we just chose to use these because maybe it represented our instrument better. I chose the insect because it has a lot of sweeping up and down sounds, which the violin is good at. Wonderful. Could we take a question from the audience? Um, Doug. Yes, I love the sort of interdependence between the um, animals and the weather and the time. I thought it was really clear. I'm wondering if there's any sort of interdependence among you all in terms of the ensemble. Maybe either that like represents something that exists in nature or something that you use um, sort of just because you are an ensemble of musicians playing together. Great. So Doug is talking about how, asking about the ensemble and how this piece came together as a human element and as a reflection of nature. There was a part at the end where I used the arrow of the insect to turn into an, uh, like another performer, so I started copying their sounds. And earlier in the piece, I was lining up my whooping sounds with the other performers like on the B grid. A lot of what we discussed during class was kind of how animals evolve to occupy certain time and sound uh, or pitch during, like I guess out in the jungle where there's times where it really wants to be heard and times where it really doesn't and finding that balance was interesting. You want us to go all the way down the line? Um, or no? Yeah, does anyone ha have something they really want to say on this? And then um, we'll yeah, one part about the ensemble is like you have to be able to work together, and uh, one thing that really helped us work together with is a uh, graphic score, and also the conducting from Sammy helped a lot. Sounds great. And lastly, Penn, do you have one last thing to say? Um, I think it was Karina. Um, you made some woodpecker sounds, and I heard this, and I responded with my own variations of woodpecker sounds. And also, I would like to thank Talia for helping us with the lighting. Uh, this was supposed to be like a hypothetical ecosystem in a way. Um, we designed it so, like we, we composed the piece, designed the piece, whatever you want to call it. Um, we like made the piece so it would sound like an ecosystem that was going around a 24 hour clock as most ecosystems do. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. So we all work together with Let's that. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs>